My name is Fraser Simpson. I'll be your entertainment for this uh, brief video on T2 returns, how to do it the tax mechanic way. The first thing is to put in the year end date, so we're just going to make up a fictitious one right now. Uh, 31, say, no, we're going to say start, actually, let's say start, yeah, 2020, say 01. January 1st so that'll give out the automatic year-end date thing is when you're selecting year-end dates um, if you're doing it the first year uh, you can do it up to um, it doesn't have to be 365 days so you can actually what I tend to do is I like to uh, make the year-end date December 31st so if there's the first year is usually a stub period so if you incorporate, say, in February or something like that, I just make it from February to December 31st. Okay, so we go okay here. Uh, the thing is with corporate tax returns is, um, is really you got to be careful with efficiency because um, uh, uh, people will put in, um, uh, you know give you lots of uh, financial statements and information and so it's assembling all the information in a summary format for the tax return and so uh, the, the first thing you want to do is obviously fill in uh, all the general information the business number legal name all that and uh, down here the date of incorporation date of uh, date of incorporation is really your only critical one and um, the and then whether it's the first year of filing after incorporation so these questions uh, are all pretty straightforward and so uh, this one will just say it's it's not the first year now this Giphy is general uh, financial inform financial information this is what Revenue Canada refers to as financial information that they the format that they like to see it in, and so but um, it's uh, pretty uh, useful the, the the software because it gives you an income statement and a balance sheet that you can follow, and the Giphy formats there's a code for each element so bank for example will have its own code, and what really happens when you file the return is you're not actually filing what you see you're just filing a code of the financial statement which will give them all the information that they need for um, calculating uh, the uh, tax payable and uh, they also use it for the reason they do that is because they compare financial statements uh, to other companies so if you are a hairdresser for example and you put in all your codes and uh, what they will do is through their algorithm is that they'll compare you to other hairdressers right and so if you know as a hairdresser if your revenue is significantly higher or lower than other hairdressers in that area that's a red flag so uh, same thing with you know common things like you know meals and entertainment uh, uh, auto you know, if you have exaggerated amounts compared to other hairdressers, uh, they will flag it. And then they'll start asking questions. How come you claimed a Lamborghini for a hairdressing business? Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, is a common question that they like to, that I get asked all the time. And so, but the, the, the trick is not to claim the Lamborghini in the first place. Um, now, so when you're starting this return, again, it's similar to the T1 in that I like to show the auditor, right? And so, because the auditor kind of guides you through here, right? So the corporation did not file the 125. Well, you, follow, you, you click on here and go to the 125. And what the 125 is actually your income statement, right? And so you start there, right? And you need to put in your income statement. So uh, again, from your intake form, it's important to uh, you know have a, a, some template questions and have a snapshot again knowledge of your client right what do they do 
Uh, have they filed previous years? Is it the first year of filing? Do you have the articles of incorporation? Do you have the incorporation date? These are all questions you don't want to be asking. Uh, the, the trick is with client management, you don't want to be asking them a multitude of questions. You want to ask them one email, here's my questions, answer them. And, and so that they, you don't come go back and forth because if you do that, it'll take longer and it's inefficient. And uh, we won't make money. And if we don't make money, I'm very unhappy. And I'll be looking at who's ever preparing the tax returns. Okay, so uh, start with the revenue. And then see if you click in here, see the code. This is the Giphy code that I'm talking about, 8299, right? So and, you can just plug in the numbers there? Well, you, you can't, yeah, you can right here, uh, say the trade sales. So say you thought that, that you know, the client tells you it's 100,000. And now what happens is, that you know, these up. these are uh, default um, uh, amounts that come up, and I, these are I've, I've set this up intentionally like this because these are amounts that I like to see. I like to see what's taxable, and I like to see what the balance is. So right now, if nothing else, you're going to be paying twenty five grand, right? Now, but when you go through here, if you look on, say eight thousand, you could go here. And see, there's other sales, gas marketing, all these sales, right? Different types of sales, but they all got codes, right? So it's important to make sure that you use, get familiar with the codes, all right? Now you got opening inventory cost of sales. And then when you come down here, farming revenue, you can normally uh, um, ignore those, right? And you come down and then basically this comes to your summary. Um, now in the cost of total goods and services, so here, revenue cost of sales, total operating expenses. So in here, this is where you're going to have stuff like, uh, you know, advertising promotion. So you click on advertising and you put your advertising promotion in. Here you put the... Oh, you can add them all. You can add them all. Amortization, bad debts. You got all kinds of things. So uh, this one will insurance. be like a T2125. That's right. In the yeah. small You're making business. your own T2125. Mm -hmm. Except for a corporation, you need to do an income statement, a P&L, and a balance sheet, right? Mm -hmm. So this is the income statement. So the first thing you want to do is you need to get an income statement balance sheet, right? And because that's what you're going to put in here. And um, normally, if we're taking over a client, uh, you know, uh, they'll have one of these have already been filed in a previous year. So we should be able to get the prior year numbers, right? Um, that's why it's a little bit more work for a corporation. That's why I charge a little bit more, right? Um, so the first thing to do is, uh, you know, you fill out your, first of all, your information, your revenue, and then your balance sheet. Your balance sheet, this is, you gotta get uh, familiar with the, the schedule. So this is a, a, a 125, right? And then uh, down here in the audits, oh, see, and the corporation is, so in the audits it says total assets, it's not equal liabilities and shareholders equity. Please review schedule 100. Schedule 100 is your balance sheet. And it doesn't agree because you haven't put anything in here. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, this will automatically, you see right now, it's already pulling off the revenue that you you put on the uh, revenue uh, P&L. So it automatically transfers to here. So this is how you got to make your, this is how you balance your balance sheet. And up here, uh, you, you'll get used to these codes, but say cash and deposits is 1,000. Um, you go down here and you go at other things, accounts receivable, allowance, trade, you know, all the normal assets and then you got liabilities and equity and um, you know sometimes sometimes you may not have all the information there's ways of doing it a little bit quicker and I'm going to save that for another video because I don't really want that one to be public <laughs> okay so I think for um, you know, for simplicity, for to do a T2, for starters, for a beginner lesson, you know, do your, your schedule, your P&L, which is schedule 125, your balance sheet 100, 
the first step is to get your balance sheet balanced. And that will get rid of these uh, uh, audit uh, questions. And then, then you just go through your RISI, your T2 RISI. The RISI is, is the form that actually you file with the codes. And so that's why it's saying when it's a RISI is kind of an electronic format that they're looking for going, hey, the RISI has a problem because a corporation here, there's a bunch of questions you have to answer uh, before you are allowed to electronically file it. Mm -hmm. So in this one, for example, um, were notes to the financial statements prepared? Almost always you're gonna put no to this question. That's because when I do a, uh, when I do a corporate tax return for a client, I don't normally do a financial statement. I do it in here, but I don't prepare, the big firms, if you're bigger than that, they will prepare actual financial statements with notes. And, and then you have different levels. You have notice to reader, review, audit. And so that's why it's asking for these, has notes been prepared? So almost always you're gonna say no, unless they give you financial statements, but. Uh, that's very rare for us, okay? Uh, our, our clients are cheap. They come to us uh, so that they can do it inexpensively, all right? They, well, no, but that being cheap is okay. Frugal, frugal, let's say. You know, like the Scottish like to say frugal. So these questions here, um, does this corporation have investments in joint ventures? There's certain questions you have to answer. And it's, again, they're trying to trip you up on these things always when they ask you a question, right? So when you answer, uh, does a corporation have any investments in joint ventures? I mean, you're now forced to, you know, basically declare whether you have any partnership interests or joint venture interests, right? So to answer that falsely is, guess what? Prison dam. That's when you go in with uh, Bubba and uh, you get, I'll uh, come and visit you every once in a while with a, a cake and uh, with a file in it, right? So you don't want to be in that situation. Right, what else do we got here? So other questions? Please answer yes or no. Well, that's very annoying. Um, so, oh, please provide legal name. These these ones are all telephone number, jurisdiction. Jurisdiction is important because you know you have different provincial corporate rates. Uh, so it matters if you're in Ontario versus say Calgary, and we've got clients all over the country. So you're going to make sure that the, your jurisdiction is right. You gotta make sure you got your business number, um, GST number, see if they got a payroll number. Um, now this here is a very important one. Uh, North American, what is the co corporation's main revenue generating business activity? This is your, uh, it's what they call their, uh, like there's a classific it, uh, North American industry classification system code. And so it identifies here, um, you can go say soybean farming is code 1110. And so what you want to do here, don't waste a lot of time on this. I see people get tripped up on this. Tan Weir probably spends three hours doing this, just getting potato farming, all right? What you do is you go on the internet, and it's a thing called Google, right? And you type in code or industry code for soybean farming, and it'll pop up and give you the number, all right? so. Uh, we'll go through that. Uh, don't worry, I've, I've already, uh, you know, um, passed this through Tanware, and, and those HR issues are all are all fine now. Um, let me see, type of corporation. This is another important one. Type of corporation at the end of the year, almost always going to be a Canadian-controlled private corporation, which you see here. Canadian-controlled private corporation is called a CCPC. CCPC has a very special designation uh, because it gets uh, a, a, a good corporate tax rate. It's like, I can't remember what it is right now. It's um, it's about, it's around 16%, I think it is. Um, you can always go up here, go to uh, tax summary. Yeah, it depend we haven't filled this out, but it will give you actually percentages uh, once you establish all the codes, uh, I mean, establish your jurisdiction and the type of corporation, 
and then it would pop out what your, your interest rates are. The reason it's 25% up here right now, because it doesn't know that it's a CCPC, mm -hmm. right? Once we click on here, actually, I'm wondering if I can do that right now. Yeah, see, if I put in, see how it says 25,000 right now? Because it thinks it's a large corporation, right? Mm -hmm. Defaults to that. Well, we're going to make it this. And enter. See how the federal balance went down to 19, mm -hmm. right? So that's 19%. Now, up here, up here, uh, if we put it in Ontario, the jurisdiction is where the corporation where, appear, like where, where the head office is. Also, oh, hmm. where they incorporate. It doesn't matter that they are. They give the services here in Ontario if they are no, incorporated it, in BC. No, it's where the head office is, but it's also where they conduct business, right? So if you conduct, if you're an, if you're incorporated in Ontario, but you conduct business in in Calgary, then your jurisdiction is Calgary. Okay, so that's Ontario. important to know both. Yeah. Yes, it's important to know where they do what. Knowledge of client, right? Mm -hmm. What business do you do? Where do you do it, right? Um, but there's other things too. There's it's it's a gray area too that uh, normally I, it's Ontario for me. Um, if I usually go by the head office, so if the head office is in Ontario, I just select Ontario. If they want to, uh, because nowadays it's a bit convoluted because of. Uh, e-commerce and online business you basically it's all over the world right and even myself I'm all over Canada so where's my jurisdiction I just put Ontario um, let me see so if we put Ontario and we enter that again see it went down again mm -hmm. because That's it's now awesome. giving you a credit the federal balance it's giving you a federal balance credit um, because it now taking out the provincial portion so see all those things factor into it. So, you know, what you want to, again, with the same with the T1s, this on a T2, is get used to eliminating your audit questions. So you want to get into a process where, you know, make notes, go, you know, get your information down. Make sure you have your questions because you don't want to go back and go, you know, what's the incorporation date after you're 95% complete? That's a pain in the neck because now you, you're holding up the whole thing. You want to ask the questions all up front, right? And when you get, uh, you know, this client you're talking about here has got a USB, you got to look at it, you know, they, they tend to, clients tend to, you know, give you a multitude of documents and everything. Basically, all you need is the P&L and balance sheet, right? If you don't have the P&L and balance sheet, you've got to do bookkeeping now. And if you've got to do bookkeeping, the invoice goes up because you've got to spend time doing it, right? So you want to then... That's a whole other conversation about how do you take, get the information into a format that you can use quickly. That's the trick, right? Um, so what you'd like to get is, you know, you can tell, and this is how I sell things to clients too. I'll do your corporate tax return for X amount of dollars if you give me a P&L and a balance sheet. You don't give me a P&L and balance sheet and you give me bookkeeping to do or bank statements, then I've got to charge you bookkeeping. It's going to be more, right? Um, so uh, again, this is there's a lot of other more detailed things in here, like uh, you know you can get into products and services in other provinces and all this. It can get really, uh, you know, you can get really sophisticated with it because really this is if you're going to do say Pepsi Cola, you basically are using the same return, right? Mm -hmm. So that's why it's very useful information. You can now go out, leave the tax mechanic, and work for uh, Pepsi Cola and say toodaloo. Razor, but I'm going for the big tab because I can do a T2 but you need a little bit more experience before you do that but um, down the road you could always do that right you could dream about doing that leaving me one day right um, but right now it's just a dream so international financial reporting standards is um, these are standards that uh, are used for recording financial statements so you have to do them according to those standards but uh, that's again pretty sophisticated. But basically, they're it's using generally accepted accounting principles, mm -hmm. and those are well ingrained. They're separate for Canada. The uh, uh, United States has their own system. Britain has their own system, but we basically stole Britain's because that's what we do. And uh, it's very you know uh, basically ours is very clean 
and it's like you know uh, just follow normal accounting standards so when you recognize revenue you recognize revenue as it occurs using um, you know not the uh, cash method but uh, you it's it's you record them as they occur so you can, you're gonna have accounts receivable at the end of the year and it's hard to pay tax on money that you haven't received yet but that that's a system that we're in um, so that's it, and and again, you know, the, the name of the game at the end of this is to get rid of these audit questions, right? And these audit questions are all, see there's different warnings, right? Like these T2 warnings, these are kind of like normal warnings, but these ones, they, they, when they're red, yeah. they're, they're, you know, big problem. Obviously, you don't have the business number in there, or providing the legal name, it's like, you know, so, Essentially what I do, I do the same thing you're going to do, is I, I start, I put in my information, I put in my p and I put in my balance sheet. Once my balance sheet is balanced, then I start knocking off my questions. And I don't even go through and answer the questions, I usually go to the audit and just click on each one. What do you want me to do? What do you want me to do? What do you want me to do? And usually it's yes or no, yes or no, yes or no, or put a number here, right? And once you finish all those, you're done. And then the whole trick is to... You know, once you get used to this, it's all system, right? So if you, it's it's like anything else. If you work out properly and use the right technique, you're going to get big muscles. If you do it wrong, you're not going to get big muscles. You're going to hurt yourself. You're going to hurt your, strain your ligaments or something. Same with this. If you don't ask all the questions properly in the beginning, you're going to, it's going to be a uh, take a longer time. I mean, that's it's going to be inefficient. So, you know, always keep in mind. Keep your question. Once you do through something once, once you do a T two, again, you keep you you know keep uh, your Trello notes. You're going to have a Trello note for T ones, Trello or Trello card for T ones, Trello card for T twos, and your questions are all going to be you know there's critical questions. Oh boy, always going to make sure you know got to ask for the business number, obviously. Got to ask for a payroll number, uh, because if they have payroll, then it's other issues, right? Uh, GST number. You got to follow GST return. All these things pop out, right? Uh, uh, head office articles of incorporation is a big one, right? You got to make sure you you want a copy of the articles of incorporation. That's, there's a couple things that I insist on. That's one, and part of that is because there's there's rules that. Um, about uh, client knowledge, right? And uh, part of that is, you know, if you don't have the articles of incorporation, you're not really doing your due diligence in learning about the corporation, are you? Right? So, because there's, you have to put, you have to put that information on. Who's the shareholders? Where, what was the sh uh, incorporation date? What is the incorporation number? And there's a couple of different numbers on there. So that stuff, if you don't have the articles of incorporation, it's irresponsible to, to do a return without it, right? Um, so it's important to get that. So that's, I think that's uh, basically it. We, we go to a little uh, Q&A, but uh, I think we're up against lunch, so uh, we're gonna just kibosh that whole idea, all right? Thank you for uh, watching my video on T2, the tax mechanic way.